So the Mercedes Maybach is finally launched. This is the ultimate symbol of luxury, as at least as far as Mercedes goes. And talking to me about it is Martin Schwenk, the CEO of Mercedes-Benz India. Martin, uh, a big day. This is your absolute uh, flagship. Obviously, small volumes, but a very significant car nonetheless. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I said in my presentation, when an S-Class is for me on the scale from 1 to 10, it's a 10. Yeah, I have to give these cars an 11 or 12 for the ones who really need more than what you actually need. Yeah. Right. So, uh, and it's for us the top of the class. It is a high-tech car. It is uh, a luxurious car, sophisticated luxury. I think it, it uh, hits it quite well. Right. You know, uh, Martin, I want to talk to you about a trend which we are seeing. Uh, you know, it, it's across not just luxury cars, but even some premium cars, uh, expensive cars, uh, you launch it and then there's always something it's sold out. So I'm just trying to understand this whole supply and demand situation at this end of the market. They always, uh, it seems to be, I know the volumes are small, but uh, still the supply is very, very small as well. So, I mean, um, you know, what is the real position? Because people, even if they have the money, they just have to wait. Yeah, but I think we have to differentiate. Whenever you have an imported car, this sold out tech is even faster on it because then you compete globally uh, on the resources and, and the material and then you order upfront uh, and you get an allocation on a new car and you're in competition with many, many other markets. And I have to say at the same time, India is an expensive but not a very profitable market. Yeah, So that means we always have to strive to get the right allocation. However, uh, I think when we come now, for example, uh, onto our Maybach 580, here, which is uh, domestically produced, we have uh, it's better planable, yeah, and we get then also higher absolute uh, allocations. So this car is not sold out uh, technically as such. We have around, I guess, around 100 orders already, uh, and you will have have to wait a couple of months. That's true, yeah. So, uh, so. At the end, uh, it all hinges around the, the huge demand, which is not only a, 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 it's, it's a global situation. It's not an India picture. Which Absolutely. I think we are that. living in a shortage economy. There's no doubt about that at all ends of the market. You know, but before getting back to the Maybach, you know, even something like the GLS, uh, very popular, but huge waiting list for that. I mean, the number of people who call me up and say, can you get me a car out of turn fast? I mean, why specifically the GLS? I know it's made in the US, but again, is it the whole issue of India not being such a high priority because obviously from a business point of view, you want to go where the profits are. No, no, I would not say that. We have very good allocations and it's also one of our best sold, uh, sold SUVs. So we have very good allocation on the GLS, but the global demand is uh, much higher than it was uh, originally set up for. And we have, I mean, the car is such a, outstanding product you have driven it yeah you know that yeah so that's why the demand is much higher and it actually hits the nerve also india is an suv market more and more getting to yeah and in this segment uh, we see more and more customers also wanting uh, to have uh, a large uh, suv so that puts on top uh, pressure on the entire supply chain uh, but i would not say that we not get the right get the right allocation of course we could always need more uh, to ease up uh, but our waiting times are probably comparable to many other markets. Yeah. So, you know, the waiting times, Martin, six to seven months, sometimes even more. When is this going to become shorter? What is your forecast for this? Because uh, clearly, you know, it's, it, it's, it's a nice problem to have, but, you know, it can also cause frustration at uh, the uh, uh, customer end. And I'm sure from the sales side, there's a lot of complaints on, I'm not getting my car fast enough. Yeah, yeah, I have to admit, yeah, this is really not a situation we want to be in. I mean, it's nice to have some order bank, uh, a couple of hundred, a couple of thousand cars maybe and to, and to uh, sell them over the next two or three months. Uh, that is completely normal uh, and I think uh, acceptable for everyone. The waiting periods we are having now, they are not good for us, they are not good for the customers. Uh, but unfortunately it, it will continue to sell for some time because these demand situations don't go away uh, and uh, so if you have now a waiting time, even if we much faster, it will only, it will take time to uh, reduce that. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, during the year we will see s some improvement on the semiconductor front, which is also part of the uh, shortage. On the other hand, uh, the logistical issues uh, around uh, container shortages, uh, supply constraints out of uh, whatever kind of crisis we're having in the world, this is not really helping the cause. Yeah? So it is still a relatively instable situation in the overall supply and I believe that will continue 
I would think uh, for the better part of this year still, yeah. Right. And coming back to the Maybach, you know, uh, obviously there's a certain kind of customer who thinks the S-Class is not luxurious enough. Is it fair to say it's for a customer like that or is it a different kind of customer looking at a Maybach? Maybe even considering another brand like a Bentley or something and then, you know, looking at uh, uh, the... Uh, yeah, uh, of course, I mean, I wouldn't say the S-Class is not enough, but you can want more than... Uh, a lot, yeah. Right. So, and w when you look really for the top of it, I mean, the car is uh, 18 centimeters longer. It has a lot of additional features. Uh, so, there is a desire to own that type. Um, and we heard that earlier. It's also part of how you express yourself, yeah. And uh, so that's how people also identify themselves, rightfully so. Uh, and I just can say uh, we support that, uh, of course, and we do yeah. everything we can uh, to make them special and to make them happy also with uh, our Maybach brands now. Right. So who's going to be buying the Maybach? Is it earlier uh, buyers of the previous generation, uh, new buyers, S-Class uh, buyers, upgrading, combination of both? What's the kind of customer profile? Uh, you, you saw maybe earlier on, yeah, we have a, an age profile which is sub 40 uh, and that is a little bit uh, surprising in the first uh, note. But what we see is on the one hand, we have of course celebrities uh, from all walks of fame, so to say, uh, be it sport or uh, Bollywood or uh, so, so celebrities. We have a lot of uh, entrepreneurs, uh, tech, uh, from the tech field as well. We have in the bigger families, uh, they also uh, younger, uh, customers now already so I think that is uh, really promising for us ex as well that this this segment has potential to grow not only Maybach but the entire S-Class and segment we see very good uh, traction there also with uh, younger people and that's also why it's so important for us uh, to make clear you're not only buying here a hyper luxury car you buy also one which is the absolute top in technology you can get uh, when we talk about our MBX system when we talk about uh, level 2 auto autonomous driving uh, with uh, more capabilities that uh, so it, it is really also important for us to say this is this is what you can get when you look for high-end technology right and uh, you know uh, I'm gonna ask you a question a uh, little press you on this. Uh, is this going to be the last generation of the S-Class as we know it in IC form? I think so. It's it's something which, uh, you know, is, uh, is, is the last of a generation, so to speak. I mean, very hard for me to answer that question. But I mean, you have heard our global statement is by 2030, uh, the vast majority uh, of the market should be electric. That is what uh, Ola Kalenius has stated in public. So uh, considering our life cycles, uh, the question would be really uh, what happens during these life cycles, also maybe uh, extensions or not, or what will happen. Yeah? So I cannot give you here a conclusive answer, but it's a fair assumption that within a, a 10 years time frame, we will see a significant shift uh, to electric vehicle in this segment. And a last hurrah for the V12. I mean, in this day and age, to have a V12 is, is Get quite one rare. and park it. Uh, yeah, that's right, <laughs> it yeah. might add value instead <laughs> of depreciate. Who knows? Yeah? Absolutely. Yeah. So it's a great, uh, uh, Martin, thanks for that. Wish you all the best. Thank and, you very uh, much. Congratulations on another successful launch. Thanks for coming Thank out you. again. Bye. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you.